Games for Games Showcase. You all, this means so much to me and I'm over, it's an understatement to say I'm overjoyed that I can finally share this with you all today. Dames for Games was created to give women in the gaming community a chance to share their story, contributions, and love of games. I wanted this show to highlight some of the things that women have done in the industry and continue to do in the gaming community itself and you know as technical artists as producers as art directors all the things that we've done because we love games we've come such a long way and women have been there since the beginning you may not have realized that but we've been there since the beginning playing games helping to create the stories and helping to create the games themselves now you may have seen me around the block <laughs> You may have seen me hosting on Black Voices in Gaming, another incredible show that you guys have to catch this summer, which is going to be showcasing all kinds of Black developers who are up and coming and showing their wonderful games. You may have seen me chatting with my fam over at the Level 1 2XP podcast, and you might have caught me in your DMs trying to help market indie games as the marketing manager of Freedom Games. My name is Destiny, and to say that I'm thrilled, you know I'm already excited to be here because I helped create this with a lot of other people. Like we've come together to put this show together, but we have so much in store for you. And before we jump into the first incredible interview, I'm going to let my homegirl Red tell us a little bit about herself. Uh, thanks, Des. Uh, you said a lot in a nut nutshell. That's like the commencement speech right there. <laughs> um, hi, everyone. I'm right in for me. You're a master geekress, also founder of Geek Game Tight and a veteran journalist in the gaming industry. Like, I'm so hyped because when Destiny first told me about creating a showcase to shine light on women and girls from all walks of life uh, in the community, I was like, sign me up right away i'm all <laughs> for changing the narrative so uh like des also i've been a part of the mix fam co-hosting black voices in gaming like she said definitely check out this summer which is an incredible showcase um spotlighting a lot of marginalized of course game developers and give them new light and shine and now i have the honor of working with the dames for games team i'm so excited about what's about to show in store so um we have a lot from the community professionals and also projects led by some amazing ladies to show today so uh, y'all stay excited just as long with us too so all this cannot happen without uh support needed to even make this come alive from an idea to what we have for fruition today so destiny let us everyone know about our support and partners 
It's my pleasure. So first of all, we would really love to give a shout out and a huge thank you to Freedom Games. I have to, they, they just made so much of this possible. They really know how to make a girl feel special. Also to the Mix <laughs> team who continues to make waves in the industry and honestly have been such a great influence and help. They've helped to create spaces like this and I can't thank them enough. Kickstarter is out here kicking butt and taking names as one of the premier places to crowdfund and market your game and anything else you really have going on. Uh, did you guys see what I did with the joke there? Yeah, yeah, comical genius. And also, last but not least, Experience Studios. They're the nonprofit organization that BBIG is under. That's Black Voices in Gaming and soon to be Dames for Games so that we can take on the noble cause to help provide funds to up and coming developers and all the support they need to create their games. Next, we'd like to shout out some partners who have worked with us to help market and just get the word out about this incredible showcase. Wings, an amazing organization working to help develop reach their dreams geek game type um i believe we have somebody on the show who like runs geek game type her name may or may not be I red know. infamy <laughs> i don't know <laughs> uh, <laughs> also a taco noir the creators of the first blurred box i don't know if you guys have ever had those like mystery boxes where you like sign up for them and get all kinds of goodies but you need to check out otaku noir they have some incredible stuff in their boxes and okay. last but not least i said that twice but party chat podcast such a dope scene over at party chat podcast if you haven't checked them out it is a must they will also be streaming our showcase huge thank you to christine she is incredible now onto our broadcasting partners who without their help you guys would not be watching right now so that's right let's not forget them twitch gaming ign game jolt GameSpot and steam you all are incredible because you help us spread the word about these initiatives and help us to create the change that we want to see but um before we jump right into seeing our first game and our first developer and talking all things good, Rhett, can you tell the people where to find us if they want to find out more information? Oh, indeed. So everyone, make sure you follow us on Dames for Games on Twitter, Dames for Games YouTube channel, Instagram, and TikTok. And last but not least, I got to say it just like you. Ah. <laughs> all the games that's showing throughout the entire showcase make sure you de definitely check out the steam page which is the mix <coughs> page where you'll see a lot of dames for game titles buy the av available games that's already out and make sure you wish list them as well it really helps the developers kind of gauge who's interested in their games and you also get updates as well when it releases absolutely if you type in gorilla collective 2023 when you go to Steam, it'll bring up all of the games from the Gorilla Collective, Black Voices in Gaming, and the incredible games we're gonna show today on Dames for Games. But Red, I, I just wanna say I appreciate you. I love you, thank you so much. Um, as she said, you can keep up with our journey across several social media platforms, but I think it's that time. I think it's time to start the show and uh, give the people what they came for. Are we ready? I'm, I've been ready. Let's 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 get let's get this going. She's been let's ready. Go. She's been ready. All right, let's get it going. Let's get it going.
Oh my God. Okay, listen, I know I get excited about a lot of things, but the music and like the entire feel of this game, my grandpa used to watch wrestling. Like, I don't remember when it would come on, but he, I swear to God, he broke at least three lazy boys just getting super excited into it. And my grandma would get so mad and just watching that wrestling again. But wrestling is hype. And I love that we have a game about it. It's so colorful. It's so cool. Red, tell me, what did you think about Wrestle Story? Like, just like you mentioned, I was I was bopping to the music and everything. But yeah, wrestling, used to watch it when I was little. I even have family that are wrestling. My nephew is a is an up and coming wrestler. So okay. shouts out. <laughs> yeah, shouts out to Trey Vaughn. Um, but the game looks incredible. I love how you can create your own characters and everything. So I can't wait to play and speak to Zoe. Awesome. Well, that's who we have up next. Zoe Servant, the art director of this incredible game, The Russell Story. Zoe, are you with us? Uh, hello. Oh, yes. I think I'm with you. How's it going? Thanks for good, having me. Good, good. No, thanks for coming on, because I know as a developer, you Thanks. guys are very busy. You have all these things, and the game's not out yet, because you're, you're still working on it. But one of my questions before we even start to talk about the game is, can you tell us a little bit about your journey in the industry? Like, how did you become the art director of WrestleStory? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, so growing up, I have always loved video games. I've always loved art. Um, and I was very fortunate to have two uh, parents who were also artists. So they were all, always very supportive and encouraging of me in that pursuit. Um, and when I started looking at colleges and thinking about what I was gonna do for my, you know, my job or my life, my mom suggested, well, maybe, you know, would you wanna work in animation? And I didn't up until that point ever really consider that that was something that people did as a job, obviously. Right. You know they do someone has to create the media that we consume but i just never really uh thought about it so um i ended up going to usc for uh at their interactive game design um program and i was there for four years and then when i graduated um i was trying to look for work and i was really struggling couldn't get anything i was applying all around um it was very discouraging but um i ended up working um in stop motion i ended up working a lot of freelance and um, all that time I was just applying to everything I could possibly apply to. I was working on my portfolio on the side just trying to improve it as much as I possibly could and um, eventually I was able to uh, get a job at an educational games company and I worked there for a few months or about eight months until an old classmate of mine from USC actually uh, reached out to me and was able to pull me in at TikTok. Um, so that was about four nice. years ago. So I've been at TikTok for about four years um, and I started as an associate art director and then eventually moved up to art director um, at the studio. So yeah, well, that's a little bit. Good. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, no, the game looks good. Red, Red could not wait, y'all. She started playing already. So we, we're, yeah. we're checking out the game. It looks incredible. The character design is great. Like, I'm super excited. But before, like, I throw it over to Red, um, she was bopping to the music really hard. Y'all, she was bopping to the music before we even started interviewing. Like, she was just like, what is this? Like, all, all kinds of moves. <laughs> and I know from just speaking to you earlier that you, Zoe, you were really excited about the music too, because like it kind of like yeah. brought it to life. So as Red is getting in here and, and starting her wrestle journey life, can you tell us about the music? Yeah, absolutely. So the music was made by a company called A Shell in the Pit. Um, they've done a lot of music for different games, um, Rogue Legacy, Untitled Goose Game. Um, they've got a lot of really talented oh, wow. artists there. So we were fortunate enough to work with them on uh, the PAX demo that we put together. and. All of the music came in really kind of like down to the wire, all the sound effects that you're hearing in the demo, they came in probably, you know, three to two to three weeks before uh, PAX, uh, PAX East. So we've been working on this and then to hear the sound come in and to hear the music come in, I opened the build one day and I was like, oh my God, <laughs> you're running around Paradise City. And it's like, it feels like this tropical, like, place it feels so good 
And um, yeah, when my when the game director Steve sent me the uh, Paradise City soundtrack that came in, I was like on a road trip driving up to up north, and I just played it on a loop um, for probably like ten minutes, just being like, "Oh, this is so good! I want to like put it on Spotify. Like everyone <laughs> should get to hear this. I can't wait to put it in the game." Um, yeah, that was a really exciting moment. That's what's up. And listen, it really does fit the overall look and, and feel of the game. Now, one of the questions I wanted to ask as an art director, because a lot of people may not know what it is you do, like specifically at the at the um, company, my words are like leaving my brain. It's because I'm hungry. It's because I'm hungry. But so can you tell us a little more about like being an art director and kind of the role that you play when it comes to creating games? Yeah, absolutely. So my role, you know, for the past two and a half years, we've been working on this game. It's been a very small team, myself, um, our game director, our lead programmer, just sort of incubating the idea. And for the past two years, pretty much my role as the art director has been figuring out, you know, obviously how it's going to look, setting style parameters around the UI, the visual effects the character designs, the environments, figuring out how, how they all kind of mesh together and then figuring out how we, you know, can scale that up in a 3D sense. So figuring out how, um, you know, some some characters look good in a 2D sketch and then when you <laughs> transform that into a 3D world, there's Absolutely. some weird stuff going on. <laughs> so there was a lot of iteration on that, a lot of exploration. Um, so yeah, for the first two years, my job was mostly concepting and style establishing. So doing a lot of art and my job now has transformed a little bit. I think, you know, when people hear art director, they do think you're doing a lot of art, but the truth is once your team becomes large enough, the job Fantastic. really does become more management um, mm -hmm. and sort of production focus. So doing a lot of red lines, giving feedback, writing up assignments. Um, and there's a, a little bit of a balance in there because I like to get in and get my hands dirty too. So Yeah. Um, yeah. I love that. Red, how are you doing? I, I didn't okay. I didn't pay attention to which character is yours, but I can tell you're the one with the pink pompadour. That's you, right? That's all you. <laughs> yeah. There oh, you go. Oh, you got it. I was yeah. like, wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. That one's tricky. So yeah, we're all of the different moves are gonna have different action commands associated with them. So, um, you know, the body slam has a hold the joystick up and release. Other moves will have, you know, different timing button presses. You'll see a little bit more, you know, if you get that far in the demo, but um, yeah, we wanted to give the player a lot to do during combat. I think people will sometimes hear turn-based combat and they kind of, worried that it won't be super engaging but wrestling is all about the drama it's all about you know the hard hits so we wanted to make sure that that is coming through for the player even in a turn-based game keep them engaged i love the character design wow. i i love the character design so much like it's just so you. fun you know and then like the the entire city i just want to run around it and explore it like it, everything just looks so well put together it's very cohesive Red, tell us your thoughts. Like you, you're actually in there playing the game. Like, how do you feel about it? I, I mean, so far, like even starting out, I love the banter already, and even the different dialogue that you can choose. I love when you can actually pick what you want to say. So if you want to be a little quirky, sinister, or very professional, or whatever, in a way you want to be with your dialogue, then you can. But I love how I look. I love that you can create your own uh, character in some type of way. I love the skin tones. Y'all know I love, you gotta be melanated in some type gotta of way. gotta have some variety, uh, yeah. Yeah, so I, I love that people are able to choose what they want and it is a different spin on wrestling games. Uh, so I feel like anyone and everyone can actually play it. So it's, it's dope. Yeah, I do have a awesome. question, Zoe. Uh, so with animation, like I have some friends that develop or, you know, or make uh, animation as far as with film. What would you say is some of the, the obstacles you had to overcome with being an animator? That is a great question. I think the biggest obstacle, and this is something that we're still kind of working through, figuring out, you know, ironing out the kinks in is 
Um, you know, you mentioned the character design, something being something that you really liked. That that has posed an interesting um, some interesting challenges to us. You know, originally we had a lot of characters that were sort of a little bit more uniform in their shape, um, which makes it a little bit easier to have characters of different, you know, of similar shapes picking them, picking each other up and, and throwing them. Um, but we decided that we wanted to really push that, push and pull the proportions. You'll see characters that are really large. You know, they got these giant shoulders, they got big heads, they got big feet. Um, and they're picking up and throwing characters that are really small, um, you know, maybe two to three times smaller than them. Um, and figuring out how to get animations on one character to, you know, a body slam on one character to look good on a body slam on, you know, the same animation on a right. different character. Um, that has been a challenge. Um, but I think that, you know, where we've landed with it is successful, but there's always something funky that goes on when you put a new animation in there and you're like, all right, let's try this on the big boss character and see how it looks. Um, you never quite know. You're kind of crossing your fingers and hoping that nothing crazy is going to happen. Um, but I think that's probably been the main the main obstacle for us is is because we've pushed our characters so far design wise. It does, um, you know, it raises a couple a couple questions of how's the animation going to look <laughs> when, when they start throwing each other around the ring. So that's really important. It's a wrestling game, you know. Right. And it, it's looking like spectacular. And first of all, like our our interview times are always so short. Like I always want to ask a ton more questions and get like really, really real. in depth with it because there's so many things that go into creating a game and we've only scratched the surface. Okay guys, we've only scratched the surface, but hopefully we can bring you back. We can bring Russell's story back and, and we can get more in depth about like other things that you guys are doing with the game. Now, I don't know if I can ask this, but I'm gonna ask it anyways. Is there like a time frame of a demo that's gonna drop so our viewers and others can check it out for themselves and experience the Wrestle story? Um, so currently we don't have a release date. The plan is, you know, we are gonna release it when it's good and ready and we're happy with it and we think that people will really enjoy it. Um, we are looking for a publisher, so hopefully by the time this interview comes out, we've got, you know, some fun updates yeah. on that. But, you know, obviously external funding will really help Harry. to move that release date closer. Um, but right now, what we're planning is PAX West is probably the next time people will be able to play the game. We're hoping to have, you know, you saw in the demo, there was sort of character presets that you could choose from. We're working right now on an even more fleshed out character creator that's got a lot of variety oh, nice. in it. So hopefully I love the next time people characters. play the game, we can showcase that. Yeah, and because that was kind of the biggest feedback that we got from people at PAX was that they just wanted to make their own wrestler, which is like yeah. totally fair. That's exactly what I wanted to do. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm really excited to be able to show that off. Um, and hopefully PAX West will be when, when we're able to show more of the content that we've been creating. Thank you, Zoe. So if you guys are going to be at PAX West, make sure to stop by their booth. They were at PAX East, it was incredible. I know we're running on time, but they actually had a wrestler stop by and people were losing their mind. Zoe, in like 30 seconds, maybe less, can you tell us a little bit about that, the wrestler who stopped yeah. by to play your game? Yeah, so uh, Austin Creed, who is, uh, he goes by Xavier Woods, he's oh, a WWE Austin wrestler. Um, he was doing a panel for his um, his Up, Up, Down, Down show, and somebody mentioned our game. He came down and he checked out the flyer, took a picture of it, and then we heard about that and we were like, well, that's amazing. We hope that he comes by. And uh, he actually did end up coming by the next day and playing the game. He hung out with us right. for a little bit. It was really cool to meet him. Very surreal moment to see him that's come in awesome. and be like, oh my God. Hey. <laughs> that's awesome. Yo, um, if you get a wrestler was, blessing your cool. game, I, I think it's yeah. gold. If you That'd be nice if Austin Creed was in here. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's <laughs> yeah, that that's wild. Cool. You got to do a shout out to him cool somehow. If he's in the game. <laughs> that would be very cool. You never know. Well, Zoe, Time will tell. We got a lot of dev oh, ahead of us. So that's true. That's true. Well, Zoe, thank Making you so much for spending some time and coming on and talking with us, letting us play your game and show our audience if people want to keep up with you and what TikTok Games is doing, and if they want to just keep up on Wrestle Story, can you drop your socials for us? 
Yeah, absolutely. So my socials, uh, just my name, Zoe Serban. But um, if you want to keep up to date on what the game is, on what's happening with the game, you can check out TikTok Games on Twitter. Um, T I C T O C Games, not uh, the video app. And uh, you can also <laughs> check out Wrestle Story on Steam. Give us a wish list. That's super helpful for us in our in our uh, publisher hunt. Um, and you'll also get updates as we you know announce closer to release and everything like that awesome zoe once thank again thank you guys so like, much no thank you because i i know developers are busy and it, this has been so incredible all of our guests have been super super awesome and you are no exception so i appreciate it so much but thank you thank you guys oh, so much you're welcome we have zoe was just wrestle story was just the first interview okay we have so much more to show you and i just i feel like you're gonna be blown away i read i i'm running out of words red red to talk to the people i'm gonna follow up i'm gonna give you the follow up all right but everyone y'all are in store like for some epicness some dopeness epicness all from people that are alike that love the passion for gaming ladies out there from whatever age, whatever walk of life, we do exist, okay? We do exist, we create, we innovate here in this space, and we're about to show you more of that during a Dames for Games showcase. So get excited with Stay us. Stay tuned, stay tuned. Guys, and any of the games that you see in today's showcase, including Wrestle Story, make sure to check out Guerrilla Collective 2023 on Steam. Go wishlist some of those games. They are incredible. The ones we're going to show later are incredible. And also, there are going to be some cool games with Black Voices in Gaming and just the Gorilla Collective in general. So what you it's the summertime. This is the perfect time to go wishlist games and go buy some games. So go do it. And uh, we'll catch you in the next interview. <laughs> Yo, Wrestle Story looked amazing. And everyone, remember, whatever you see throughout the show, Wish list it on Steam, our Steam page. It helps support the developers and let them know specifically who's interested in their game. So make sure you support that way if you want the game or just to support in general. So up next, we have a special guest from the gaming community. All right, but before we jump into our guests, we have a new player coming in, a new host. And I'm gonna leave it to you, Hugger. What is up, Red? I am excited to be here. My name is The Floor Hugger. You guys might see me at level one more than anything else, you know, doing podcasts, being weird on Tuesdays, and just enjoying things. You can find me all across social media. You'll find me on TikTok the most. It's all The Floor Hugger. So if you just want to hang out for a bit, go play some Valorant with me. I'll be down for that. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta, um, get me into the Apex and everything and Valorant because, uh, I've been slacking a bit. I got you. Well, we do have a fellow shooter here. Okay, we have Cells from the community, who is a huge Halo fan. So, Cells, welcome in. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I, it's an yes, honor. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Listen, Thank you so I, I've seen your content. I've seen you in these Halo streets. So, let us know like your humble beginnings in gaming so pretty much i grew up with a bunch of boys like we all lived on the same block and we all hung out in each other's basements and played video games and um i've always been exposed to video games even if like i wasn't playing it like if it was either my uncles or my cousins or my brother like there was always a console in the house and even if i wasn't playing with it at the time i just i was always exposed to video games whether i was gonna play or not <laughs> but luckily for me i got into it and um i you know i i ended up making friends um growing up who were the big reason why i got into halo and we ended up just always hanging out in each other's basements eating pizza and like 
you know, hanging that's out till three in the morning, <laughs> doing that's like best system time. links and stuff. <laughs> Well, that's that's taking it way back, right, Hugger? That's that's taking it way back. <laughs> I'm just gonna say we're doing a land party. Everybody, bring your console right. over. Yep, we all had our book bags with our Xboxes in it and stuff. <laughs> wow, it's making me reminisce on old times. There, you you made me almost shed a tear for a second there. <laughs> I miss those days. Seriously. So, so being. A mom a lot of a lot of people don't understand a lot of times like I'm an auntie okay but <laughs> being a mom and a gamer like how how is that and do you find yourself even teaching your children about video games as well well I always say that thanks to my oldest son I got back into gaming um, I've only been like I've only played on consoles. My son is the PC kid. Like he has, you know, like he's really into his gaming and everything. And um, I've always found myself going back and forth. Like I'll have a moment where I'll binge and play video games for a specific amount of time. Then you know, mom life happens, and then I really find myself not having as much time. Um, one day my son comes up to me he's like you know there's a new halo game coming out and i was like oh really he you should play and from there on i got back into it and it, it was like i was just so happy that i was able to i missed it you know it was something that i look forward to whenever i needed like a moment and you know needed a break and um it was cool because i just feel like now i have something more to connect with my son so we'll you know and as I've been, you know, um, becoming more familiar with the world of gaming and like speaking to more people within the gaming community, learning about other titles and stuff like that, it's what influenced me to start streaming. And I owe thank my son for it. He was like, "Mom, you should just get back on and play again," because he's he he's always seen me dabble at video games here and there since he was a baby. And, you know, I guess from seeing me play here and there, it got him into it. Yeah. <laughs> so we inspired so each other, I guess. <laughs> that Do you have anything heart. to ask? Since you a shooter, you know, you got a fellow shooter right here, okay? Halo I got OG. no aim, though. That's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> I love shooters, but I can't aim. What's your favorite Halo? Aimless because I'm now getting into Halo. I got to get into <laughs> yeah, it. Halo. <laughs> Halo. So I I could say Halo 3 because, you know, that's like the go-to for everyone in the 360 generation cuz that was like the first like that was my first real console that I had went to GameStop and bought waited online for Halo 3, got the legendary edition, the helmet with all the mm -hmm. with all the games inside like but I do yeah, we see have, that in the background. Yeah. <laughs> um, I do have a soft spot for Halo 2 because that's where that's what me and my friends played. And then story wise, Halo 4 has my heart. I sobbed immensely when I played that campaign. <laughs> so I don't know. I like all of them. <laughs> hey, that's fair. <laughs> they are all fantastic games of varying quality for some people, but it's a franchise that has been, what, 20 years now? Like, yeah. there's a reason why. Do you play any other games but Halo? Yeah, um, Fortnite has me in a chokehold. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so right like... now, that's, that's my go-to multi right now. Yes, like if I don't know what to play, if I'm just like, oh, I don't know what I'm in the mood for. I'm just like, oh, let me just play Fortnite. Like, <laughs> and then um, I play Overwatch. I just recently got into Overwatch. Um, okay. I also play Call of Duty um, and trying to like, you know, try other things. Like I was trying Counter-Strike, um, Battlefield and stuff like that. I, I want to like learn more um shooters and get familiarized and you know incorporate that when i stream like 
because that's what my main focus is when it comes to streaming just like shooting things so the more <laughs> games i can like expose myself to i'm down for it <laughs> i hear that but those are my four so, games right now that's what's up okay so as a as a content creator right as a content creator and also as a as a mommy i love to say mommy gamer how do you balance <laughs> it all because from streaming to playing the latest games and even dabbling in different games all at once how do you balance that even um you know being a mommy gamer at the same time to be completely honest like i'm still figuring it out myself like um schedule wise and everything at first when i started i was just going with the flow like if i had you know like in reality, it's like on the weekends when the kids go with their dad and stuff. So like that would be when I would. <laughs> but um, I, I since there's been more of like a growth within my channel and stuff like that, I was like, wow, I really need to like start setting up, you know, be a little bit more consistent because um, like I care about the viewers and stuff. And, you know, they like how I play and how I interact and, you know, like. At the end of the day, for me, it's just, I always considered when I hop on streams, like, it's just me hanging out with my friends, you know? I, um, like, I go on, I'm like, hi, guy, like, you know, it, it, like, I always felt like this, like, the people who join in and, like, hang out with me on my stream, it's like, these would be, like, people I would hang out with and play video games with, you know, if we were all in my house hanging out. <laughs> so, exactly. Yeah, like, so at first, you know, I would just wing it and wait till the kids go to bed or while the kids are in school and everything like that. So little by little, I'm trying to, like, figure out a decent schedule to be more consistent. So it's been, it's, it's a little hard because, um, you know, like, times like this, for example, like, anything can happen kids or i try to like get them to nap and i'm like yeah like <laughs> yeah i'm here like streaming and my daughter just like jumps on me and she's like mom i want a snack I'm like okay so i'm still it's a still work in progress <laughs> dope um so have you introduced like any games uh like to your twins because you mentioned you have twins as well and they're they're younger than uh your eldest so have you introduced or play any games with them or, or got them involved too angry birds i feel like that's the go-to like <laughs> yeah see i say it she's like angry birds like yeah that was i know like my 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 son that was his first game and he was like all about it, had all the plushies, had books. Like, I think I have one of his old books here from when If they want to join, they're more than welcome. If they want to join, like, they... oh, one of the, I have one of those. <laughs> these were like my sons. I have that too. So, yeah, like <laughs> he was all about like Angry Birds and Plants vs. Zombies. Like, these were his games. So, I was like, hey, you know, like, these are the games that my oldest son started playing when he was their age. So now I introduced it to them. And I'm like, oh, I guess, you know, these are the building blocks to making gamers. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah. <laughs> Core memories right there. That's adorable. And Thanks. you are adorable. Your kids are adorable. And just thank sitting you. with you right now makes me so happy. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I love your content. So before we, we he head out, is it uh, as far as anything you want to share? And also, where can we find you and, and catch your content? Um, so what I would like to share is um, within the gaming community, I primarily want to focus on gamers um, who are neurodiverse. Like my youngest son, he's on the spectrum, he has autism. And, you know, sharing his story as his caregiver, I was able to connect with a lot of, you know, gamers who are on my, who come to my stream, who, you know, 
are on the spectrum have autism adhd and you know a lot of the times they you know have difficulty you know navigating within the gaming community like getting to know others and i always honor them like i always like i would love to you know create a space where i can you know show off you know different neurodiverse gamers who are who aren't afraid to share their stories on mental health and stuff like that so that's one thing and also just connecting gamers that are moms and you know um the same way like how do you know like talk and vent about mommyhood and about games and stuff it's just like right. i just want to build a community of you know people that i can relate to you know cuz i as a neurodiverse mother of 3 it's like the best way to you know connect with others is to find people who are similar to you and yeah. build like a family mm-hmm. that's amazing <laughs> yeah. listen you you have a family here as well to help you do that here at days for games <laughs> so just let us know and um as far as your twitch and and your 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 twitter as well is it all um i am cells yeah everything's the same my um instagram my twitch my twitter my youtube channel everything's i am cells nice and easy <laughs> oh, yeah i heard it everyone so yeah definitely check out cells oh, tiktok too <laughs> tiktok too i need to work on tiktok yeah. you don't have to talk uh, on, on tiktok <laughs> as well uh but thank you so much for for joining hugger and i and and being a part of dames for games uh so thank you so much and share your story and let us know how you start your humble beginnings and also your family that you got involved with gaming as well thanks so much thank you again thank i you. really really appreciate this opportunity you guys are amazing <laughs> You're amazing. You're amazing, <laughs> honestly. Thank you. So, Hugger, what, what you, how, what you think so far? Like, yeah, cells on. I don't know how she does it. <laughs> Listen, like, salute to cells. Okay, we just go <laughs> salute, salute to cells. Oh, uh, because that's a lot. I think a lot mm-hmm. of people don't understand balancing family and and also doing your passion as well. So, shouts out. To all the mommies, the aunties, the grandmas, the titis, the tias, and everyone yeah. out there um, woman that try to balance. Enjoying it games right now, exactly. exactly. It's not easy because she's just trying to have fun too. And I can, I mean, we can speak from us. Sometimes gaming, it's it's hard. It's hard to have fun, find fun, and the fact that she's done it and is bringing her family in, that's admirable. Admirable. That is so adorable too. And, you almost brought a tear to my eye, Red. Like her kids are so cute. <laughs> you got the glasses to, to kind of, you know, hide everything. The little Nobody can tell when I'm crying. Cry. There's a reason for the glasses. <laughs> Nobody can tell when I'm about so, to cry. <laughs> See, I need that. So we have some more. Uh, we have some more incredible people heading up next. So, Hugger, share what we got. You know, before we get into that, you might want to take a look at the Steam page. There's going to be some great games out there that you might get a nice discount on that you want to play. But if you're excited now, if you're excited for what just happened, you'll be super excited with our next segment, which is the Star Player, and Michelle is going to take it home for us. Stay tuned for more from Dames for Games. I'm the Floor Hugger. You know where to find me. I hope you all have a great day, and all my socials are all the same. Thanks, Floor Hugger. That was a great interview. It's amazing to see how many people manage to game and create content all while being a parent. Women have been in the gaming industry since the industry's beginnings. Legendary women like Roberta Williams, Carol Shaw, Mabel Addis, Marielle Tremme, and Donna Bailey have paved the way for our star players. Our star players are the women who are making waves in gaming and the gaming community today. Here are their stories. You are now rocking with the hostess with the mosas. This is your girl, the natural hair gamer, Janae Bunet, and I'm a games journalist in the industry. 
anything that has to do with diversity, inclusion, bringing in more women, bringing in more Black people, you can always find a trace of me. I actually wrote a book, an ebook that helps games journalists or aspiring games journalists be better at their craft or get into the profession. So I shared all of my tools with you guys. Anything you want to know is in that book. I'm currently working on a documentary about women in the gaming industry worldwide. So I just got back from Europe talking to all these amazing women who work in the games industry, not just as programmers, but artists, release managers, jobs that we probably never even heard of. The point of the documentary is to educate, inspire, and inform to let women of all walks of life know that they can be a part of the gaming industry. So I can't wait to share the full documentary with you guys. So until next time, game safely. Hi, my name is Ami, it's so nice to meet you. I'm a visual narrator with a background in illustration and game design. On the side, I like to make videos from my streams where I play indie games for all my loved ones and friends to watch. Um, in general, my interest in games kind of comes from the love of the fact that there's so many levels of collaboration in this art form from when you make it, from when you want others to play it, and then when you want to play it with others to share. Um, I think, though, when I play games, I really enjoy the fact that I'm able to explore another world and really pushing those limits of what the game already allows me to explore and really just like enjoying the narrative that another person's trying to tell me. It's for me a very beautiful form of storytelling and I think that I'd love to hear more of other people's worlds and perspectives. It was so nice to meet you. I really like Mario Kart. It's like the best game ever. Hello, my name's Buff Garden. I'm a full-time variety streamer on Twitch and I've been streaming for nine years, well, just about nine years. Uh, gaming has always been a hobby since I was born. Just absolutely been passionate about it forever. As long as I can remember, it's brought me and family and so many friends together. And I absolutely love it. It's provided me with a job that I've done on Twitch again for nine years, which I'm so, so grateful for. And just brought me so many amazing memories and has really brought me and a bunch of new people and new friends together. And I'm just so grateful for what games have done for me. With Twitch, I was able to move to Australia and pursue my dream of living here, which is so amazing. And clearly is just like many people providing me hours and hours and hours of entertainment and joy. My name is Zelda Oakley and my mom's a game designer for Freedom Games. And I love games because I get to play with them, with mommy and daddy. My name is Aziza Brown. I am the CEO and founder of Dynamic Focus. We are an esports team that has been in operation since 2016. We focus on fighting games, we have been traveling, and also we have been working with different content creators to grow their brands and make them more acceptable for the marketplace so they can grow and be an entity of their own. Also, I am the investor in the Queen of the Hill series, a series for women, non-binary, and feminine identifying competitors, casters, and production people to be noticed by the industry. I'm also a co-host for TO Talks, a podcast that talks about the industry at large about tournament organizing. Our socials, um, Dynamic Focus on every single one, Twitter, Facebook, everything. Remember, Dynamic Focus with a K. I like to play Tukabuka. I like to play Subway Surfers. I like to play my Nintendo Switch. What do you play on your Nintendo Switch? Super Smash Bros. Minecraft. Oh. And I play Kofi and and Minecraft. Do you guys love video games? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Do you guys want to play a lot of them? Yes. yes. Hello, my name is Kay and I am a co-founder of Otaku Noir. What is Otaku Noir? Well, we are a quarterly subscription box service. We created this during the height of the pandemic because we miss visiting black creators and creators of color at the local conventions. So we decided to create a service where these content creators can have their work shared with our audiences. Speaking of our audience, 
We are so lucky and so happy to be teaming up with Games for Games and Black Voices in Gaming to give our subscribers a lot of awesome merch that you honestly don't want to miss out on. This is to promote our September Gaming Box. One more kicker. One lucky subscriber will win a really great prize. So stay tuned for more details. Hey, my name is Ksenia. I am originally from Minsk but currently living in Batumi and I am the creator of Lolo Sebi. I have a really diverse range of interests, including drawing, crafting with different materials, cooking, playing various instruments and gaming. Art has always been a significant part of my life. I have acquired skills in drawing, graphic design, composition, animation, game design and I continue to learn new things every day. The question of why I love games is really important to me as it relates to how I perceive art. As a player, you are not only an observer, rather you become an actor on a stage alongside other participants who can help you or manipulate you and even be real humans just like you. When developing indie games, it is more likely that you have to be a generalist to some extent, although my strongest suit I think lies in art direction. Being a team leader is a really hard work, but love what you do, do what you love, and everything will fall into places. There are many reasons as to why I love gaming, but one of the most important reasons is the ability that games have to transport us into a different experience. It makes us laugh, makes us cry, gives us different perspectives, um, provides an opportunity for us to connect. And that's what I love about my community or the gaming community is the ability that we can have to connect with each other, to laugh together, to cry together, to rage together. And um, sometimes it brings up topics and conversations that I think need to be had and games provides that. I love meeting with my community each week and just connecting and games provides that. Hey, my name is Jessica. I am the PR director at Uber Strategist, a PR and marketing agency serving the video game, tabletop and technology industries. Um, I've been gaming basically since I got my first Super Nintendo console. <laughs> I don't even remember what age now, but um, yeah, gaming's been one of my biggest passions in life ever since. I met with developers um, as media and was just really inspired by their passion for their projects and their hard work and just all the blood, sweat and tears that goes into their work. And I decided that I wanted to be on the other side of that, uh, helping them make their projects a success. Um, and ultimately I landed at Uber Strategist, who um, I have to give big props to, uh, just for enabling me to become the best version of myself and make a living doing what I love to do in a leadership role that I never thought was actually possible for myself. Women just have such an important role to play in this industry and bring value to any team fortunate enough to have them. Um, and my message to other women and girls that aspire to find a career here, you can do it. You can absolutely do it and don't settle for anything else less than you deserve. Um, so thank you for the amazing team at Dames and Games for having me. This was a lot of fun and I'm so excited to see more women join this industry and make it bigger and better than ever. Hi, my name is Quinn and I'm eight years old and my favorite video game so far for right now is uh, uh, Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom and I like that video game mostly because you get to collect stuff and make weapons. I like getting to see other people, um, like other people's perspective like the character's perspective in the game. I think girls in games are important because girls' perspectives are kind of important when they mix with games. I hope everyone has a good showcase and thanks Dames for Games. <laughs> That was really great. Glad to see so many women from every age and background enjoying gaming. You can keep up with all their progress at Dames for Games on Twitter and across social media. 
I'm Michelle Franklin, narrative designer at Recombobulator Games. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at author Michelle Franklin. And now, on to Jenny. Thanks so much, Michelle, and what an incredible highlight of women in the industry. Now it's time to change gears and take a look at some upcoming games created by women-led teams. The developer that brought you Mass Effect 3 and Dead Space 2 comes a new narrative adventure. Explore worlds filled with carpet-based life forms. Meet the crew of the intergalactic cruise ship Princess Andromeda. And help the galaxy's greatest space cat detective stop a shape-shifting jewel thief before it's too late. Set sail with Inspector Domino for an adventure of interplanetary proportions. In Space Boat!
you remember the warm of childhood? How it felt to have any bruises on pine needles stuck in your fingers? The wind in your hair and the floating carelessness. But also, overcoming the difficult times and injustice. Building friendships that last a lifetime can be tricky. But don't be afraid, my little pie. Mama will always be there when you feel alone. Experience the magic of childhood again with Sanya. Phew, a quick breather before we dive into some more games. Remember, one of the best ways to stay updated on titles that you're excited about is to wishlist them on Steam. It's good for the developers and can help make sure that you don't lose track of the final game when it's out and ready to play because you'll get a little notification when it launches. Ready to fill up your wish lists? Well, stay tuned because part two of our montage is ready to go and we've got lots more to share. Windspell, the crafter's paradise. You still can't believe that you finally managed to open your own storefront here. Uh, hello? Groundskeeper Bellin, please. Or better, just Bellin. I understand that you offer smithing services here. You're not sure what exactly you're going to sell yet. That, you reason, depends on what the customers ask for. You're flexible. Less flexible is the feeding schedule of your pet owl cat, Meow. Well, let's have a look. Oh, hello. Are you the owner? But a dried up wasteland. Waters become the new gold. Only a handful have managed to survive. In a world where even water is scarce, unlimited growth isn't an option because every little bit counts. In this unforgiving place, nothing lasts forever. Adapt to a nomadic lifestyle or die. Develop laws and technologies to kickstart progress when you settle down again. There's no end to the dangers of the wasteland. But with your guidance, 
your survivors just might make it through the night. will compete for your affection. What's the worst that could happen? It's always exciting to see what's in store for us, and these titles were no exception. A huge thank you to all of the teams joining in for the festivities of Dames for Games. And if you'd like to stay on top of what's happening in the indie world and discover more indie games, please feel free to follow me at Kimchika on TikTok, Twitch, and YouTube. And a major thank you to the Dames for Games team for including me in the fun and festivities. Now. Let's check back with Red and Destiny to see what else they've got in store for the rest of the show. Big shout out to all of our star players who let us share their stories. We truly appreciate it. Michelle and Jenny were absolutely fabulous. If any of you out there want to share your story with us, we're here for it. Hit us up on our socials because we want to know why you love games as much as we do. And uh, you just might be featured in our next showcase. But before we get to our next guest, I can't believe we're already halfway through. We're already half. Can you believe we're already halfway through? Like, Red. I want more. <clears throat> like, we have more, right? Because we, 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 we have more. We have a lot okay. more. But before we jump into, like, our next guest, tell me 
Uh, what did you think about the trailer montage? That was 16 games, son. 16 games that we showed off. What'd you think? A hot 16. Hot 16. I thought it was incredible. I love seeing it. It was a, a great diverse bunch of games, too. Absolutely. Like something for everyone. And that's what I love about our showcase is that not only, of course, is representation of, of all women uh, from all ages, all walks of life, but then we get to see the diversity of these women led projects as well. Because a lot of people out there still. It's 2023 and they still think that women are not passionate about games, that we're not creators of video games, content creators, competitors, you name it. They just think we just play Candy Crush and that's it. So we have something like this to show that that doesn't just exist. So I'm excited. I can't wait to dive into our next guest, Destiny. I know you're gonna do the honors of introducing what I call our new players and guest hosts. Absolutely. So we have a special guest host who's going to be doing the next interview with me. You guys stay tuned because you might learn a lot about what it takes to be a developer. show has been so incredible so far. We've had trailers, we've had our special star segment where you guys got to see women in the community and in the industry talking about the changes that they're making and creating the change that they want to see in the community and in the industry. But we still have a whole bunch more to go. I hope you enjoyed the video that we just showed you from the Wings Foundation. They're they're incredible. They are, you know what? I'm not going to I'm not going to jump into it. I'm not going to tell you what they're going to do first. I'm going to get us over to our new guest host. I'm going to let her introduce herself. And then she's going to introduce our guest to talk more about what Wings does because she's the expert and, you know, it's her world. We're just living in it. So <laughs> go ahead, Miko. Hi, I'm so happy to be here. My name is Miko Charbonneau and I've been in the game industry about nine years, mostly as a game designer in AR and VR and on games like Minecraft and some smaller titles. And right now I run the studio Pretty Smart Games, uh, which you can find out more about if you go to prettysmartgames.com. But enough about me, let's meet Karina Diaz from Wings. <laughs> Karina, are you there? Hi. Hi. Hello, hello. Hi. <laughs> Great to join you. No, thank you. Thank you for, I know you, you guys are very, very busy. So thank you for coming on. And like, we just, we want to jump right into it. Wings has done so many amazing things for women in developing and marginalized voices. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got started with them and kind of like what you guys have planned for the future? Cause I know you're doing big things. I would love to. Um, so thanks for having me. My name's Karina Diaz. 
Um, I work with Wings on many, many different projects, but everything that has to do with communications. So <laughs> that's kind of my specialty um, and why I'm happy to be here with you today. Um, I'm certainly uh, keen to talk about what Wings does and you know how we've how we've grown over the last few years. Um, I think for myself, I joined Wings in 2020 when it was just a concept that was born out of the GDC Relief Fund. Uh, you may have heard of it uh, due to COVID, it was started. Um, and as a result, we found, you know, there were a lot of developers in need um, and specifically women developers uh, who were in need of funding and support, um, all kinds of resources. So that's really where Wings came from. I joined, as I said, sort of early on. And since then we've gone on to do really amazing things, work with lots of great teams and um, yeah, plan some really special events that I think we'll talk more about today. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. One of the things that I wanted to ask you about, and then I'm going to throw it over to Miko because she has some incredible questions from coming from a developer side. But I know, and this will be a great segue, I know that you've been working with Netflix to kind of start this program that also helps up and coming developers. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely. So uh, this is the Elevate program that I think you're referencing. It's the second time we've done an Elevate program, which is intended to be a bit of an incubator uh, for gender marginalized devs to refine their pitch, um, get their project sort of ready to show off. So sometimes create a prototype or polish a prototype. Um, and the current version of Elevate is sponsored by Netflix. So we've put a focus on mobile games. Um, I think most people know you know, this is sort of a hot and up and coming area of the industry. Um, it's something that uh, increases accessibility for a lot of people. So we're really keen on mobile games, even though it's something a little bit uh, new in terms of a focus for the Elevate program. Uh, the program is going to take 10 teams. Um, it gives them a financial stipend of $10,000. It gives them mentorship, support, connections in the industry, really everything that they would need, I think, to um, again, sort of get a project ready to take to that next stage of, of funding or, or, you know, publisher support. Um, and that's very much in line with what we do at Wings. We try to give that sort of holistic support to our teams, not just money, but also um, the connections and the mentorship that, you know, really make make a big difference in this industry. See, that's incredible. Like that, that is totally. really what we should be doing. And, and you're right. Like, I know so many people, like they don't consider themselves gamers, but like, if you play games, you're a gamer, right? Like we don't even need titles, but so many 100%. people- 100%. Like, right. Point. So many people- Stop. Yep. <laughs> so many people play games on phones. And it, it re some of the games that come out on phones now and on mobile are incredible like so well done. And I, I love that like you you guys are really encompassing them because I feel like a lot of people who or a lot of developers who are making games on phones and, and mobile, like they kind of get, I don't know, they kind of get a little shade, right? So I they think- They do, they do. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a and, lot of great games that will end up no, and there's a lot of great games that will end up on phones in the future. Um, games that you're probably used to seeing on a console or a PC that are now being um, ported into a more yes. accessible and, and portable format. Um, and there's there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I think anytime as a developer, you can have more people experience your game. Um, and whether that be more people, you know, in terms of your sales numbers or just more people all over the world, like a diverse group of, of fans that you can build for your studio. Um, yeah, that's where the mobile advantage lies. And, you know, having said that, obviously we're still looking at funding PC and, and console games at Wings. That's a huge focus, but the Elevate program does um, yeah, sort of open up the door, I think, for some of the developers who are looking to explore the mobile market. And obviously with a sponsor like Netflix, uh, they're going hard and heavy into games and we're really, really excited just, you know, to have their support for women. Love it. And shout out to Netflix. Y'all are doing the work. Thank yeah. you so much. Like, that's what's <laughs> up. Because when I first heard about it, I was like, yo, Netflix is in on this? Like, that's dope. Yeah. But I should mention, too, we've partnered with Code Coven on it, who's a, you know, a oh, great um, organization okay. in the UK. If you haven't heard of Code Coven, please go check them out. Um, so Wings, you know, just we really seek out partners in the industry who share our values and, um, you know, can make real opportunities happen um, for marginalized developers. That's that's our mission. You know, diversity <laughs> is the key. Like everybody plays games. It's not just a one person or one group. Like we're all playing games, which is one of the reasons why we put this showcase together. But I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to throw it over to Miko because she has some very specific and wonderful questions. If you guys are developers watching this, like, please, please tune in because Miko, like the list is it's long, but all the questions, 
all the questions are important. And I just know that that wasn't to throw shade. I wish we could ask all the questions. So I had her like put the most important Look, I ones. I like to guys, over prepare. Listen, okay. Listen, small... I am right there with you. Bring it on. I am right there with That's you. A... But... As a small indie dev, I wear many hats and one of them is executive producer. So I have to be go. prepared for things I do. Um, but yeah, Karina, that's awesome. I actually play uh, some of the Netflix games and I've been really impressed with their platform. So I'm real, really oh, excited about this program. Um, but yeah, I did put together some questions that I think small, uh, you know, maybe developers that are hobbyists or solo devs or just starting out might be curious about. And to start off, I was wondering when you get a pitch deck at Wings, what are some things that, that we can do to make our pitch deck stand out? Like, are there some things that you wish we did more or that maybe people who are new to pitching don't always think of? That's a great question. Um, and, and it comes up a lot. Truthfully, there's not uh, anything I'm going to tell you in this answer that's going to guarantee that your pitch will will sort of stand out and shine. I think I think the project is is really the basis for that. Um, but beyond, you know, the, the core concept that you're pitching, um, being organized, having some of the fundamentals in your pitch deck. Um, and in fact, if you visit the Wings website on our blog, we have an article about how to create pitches. There's, there's lots of great resources available. Um, but I think, you know, there are some basics that we expect to see. And certainly having a plan for um, the money that you're asking for. I mean, that sounds like such an obvious thing to include, but sometimes developers, you know, think that they have a, an idea of what they need to get their game to the finish line, but they may not be taking into account things like playtesting or marketing or PR or localization. There's, there's just so many items that can go into a budget. Um, and I think that, you know, a solid pitch would include your intention for making the best use of the money that you're asking for. It's a lot easier. I mean, we fund projects up to 500K, so we need to have some idea of, um, you know, where those funds are being allocated. And in a sense, the developers who apply get to make those decisions. So showing us that you've thought about that decision process and, um, you know, sort of have a, have a plan in place for if we say yes is very important. Um, and other than that, like I said, the, the quality of your pitch often depends on the project and the ability to, to present it clearly. All right. Yeah. Oh, see, such a short time, but we have <laughs> no, it's question. okay. <laughs> yeah. And, and I feel bad because like, honestly, I would love, like, I'm just going to say it now, I would love to have you back on at some point, Karina, because I really do feel like some of these questions are important and we do have developers who are going to be watching this. And so like Miko, Karina, we, we're going to do something long form where we can really get all these questions <laughs> answered because we only have a short time. But, yeah. but before... even that question was so valuable because it was yeah. about budget. And a lot of <laughs> indies don't think about that. They're just thinking about the creative side. Right. So, like yeah. the localization. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All of yeah, that. of course. <laughs> right. yeah. But we're, we're about to like wrap it up. But before we do, before we wrap it up, Karina, I feel like you might have some news to share with us. Like, like some news you want to drop on us. Like I'm, I'm excited about I it. I do. And then, <laughs> so after you drop that exciting news, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but after you drop it, because this is very important, we want everybody to know where they can find you, your socials, where they can find out more about wings, which I feel like is very simple. You need to look up wings, but if it's not simple, she's going to put all that information out for you. So go ahead. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I mean, yeah, so really quick news. We've got some great games that we've signed recently that are coming. Um, a couple names to check out Atlas Wept, Sigh of the Abyss, um, and Whispers of the West is one that's coming up very soon. It will be launching July 13th. We've just learned it's a sort of murder mystery game for one to four people co-op. Uh, really, really fun and unique, especially if you want to get together with friends, but you can play it by yourself as well. So July 13th, that will drop. Um, otherwise, if you want to learn more about Wings, uh, wingsfund.me is our website. Uh, you'll find us at wingsfundme almost on all socials. And if you do have some questions about pitching, um, what we look for in terms of beyond gender diversity in a team and um, how we how we fund and, and provide mentorship for women teams, uh, yeah, please feel free to reach out. We're, we're always open to talk and we'd love to hear from you. Aw, Karina. Yay. I love it. Thank you so much. And before we leave, I just want to say, like, all of us are busy. All of us are taking our time to come here and 
like really focus on not just women in gaming, but marginalized voices. It's so important to be heard and to be seen. And that is why we created Dames for Games. And having Miko on, who's like making her own game and like, it's incredible. I know you guys saw the trailer. It's super incredible. Please go check it out. Go wishlist it. Thank you. The spirit lift is so good. And also make sure you check out all the games that Wing's helping to, to develop. Go wishlist those games because it's really, really important. It helps their algorithm. Trina, thank you so much for taking the time to come on. I love that hoodie. Thank you. I don't know if you know, but I'm a My hoodie pleasure. Connoisseur. Yeah, no, I do. I, I, it was between a Hello Kitty uh, hoodie or this, and I was like, I guess I should try to like- We should have all done it everything next time. Uh, next I time, say, yo, next we're gonna for have games. Dames for Hoodie Games edition. hoodies. Yeah, we are going, I'm already, working on, it. I'm already working on it. But <laughs> love it, Karina, love it. On beautiful guest guys make sure you go follow everything that wings is doing they are creating the change that we want to see in the industry but before we go totally miko that was great i mean like listen i think all the, i just have to say this again i think all the questions you had were absolutely amazing <laughs> this is why we are going to have a Next longer time we'll do a whole session yeah, on, on we're game do a whole stuff. session on game devs and karina and and everybody from wings is going to be a huge party but thank you for coming on and, and spending some time with us. Thank you for allowing us of to course, show. I'm so happy I got to. Yeah. yeah. And and thank you for letting us show some new footage of uh, the Spirit Lift, which is an incredible game. If you guys like spooky and cute, you have to check it out. Like the music is incredible. The art style is incredible. Aww, and like, thank you so I, much. it really is. It's, it's so good. But Miko, if people wanted to find you and they want to find more about Spirit Lift, like drop your socials, mm -hmm. drop everything. I know you also stream. Tell the people about <laughs> you. Yeah. So you can find out more about our games on prettysmartgames.com and you can find more about the Spirit Lift, which, you know, She's done a great job pitching it already. It is a deck building roguelike in a haunted hotel, and it is spooky and cute. Um, you can go to thespiritlift.com, and you can also watch me make the game live every week on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Dr. Mikachu. Awesome. Yo, how, how many people get to say that they're watching somebody produce a game? Like, that's incredible. It, it's really I, fun. I'm, a lot of people like to work alongside me or, you know, on anything. They could be writing or doing their homework. A lot of people nap, which is kind of funny. And I'm just like, <laughs> hey, I'm providing a service. I'll work on my game and I'll provide you a cozy place to hang out with nice people and, you know, close your eyes for a minute. I know, <laughs> I love it. Works. I love it. I love nap. So maybe I'll tune in and, and take a nap. <laughs> sure. We'd love to have you. <laughs> but Miko, you're incredible. Thank you for coming on. We will definitely oh, be hearing incredible. more from Miko in the future. Guys, we have another interview coming up. And listen, it's going to be some gameplay. And it might be me playing the game. Ooh. So I don't want to hear any smack because I haven't played it yet. And that's because <laughs> I wanted to give an authentic first impression. Okay? So stay tuned. Me and Red will be back. <laughs> Les filles s'en vont et s'y promènent Au bras des garçons, tu les entraînes Au cœur des buissons où elles étreignent L'amour en saison, tu les enchaîne Dans un tourbillon
Oh my God, that trailer was so incredible. Look, I am ready to dive in and figure out this mystery, but everything just looks really well. It, like, not really well, but really, really good. Like the rendering, can you, it's almost hard to believe that this isn't a AAA game that, we're, that we just saw. What do you think, Red? So, no, that's a fact. Like, I, I wanna know the team size. I wanna know what's behind the concept of the game. And everything but it looks amazing like i totally agree it, it's it's triple a signed and sealed and delivered so um we are going to be talking to chloe lucier she is one of the co-founders and ceo of low birth games chloe are you there we're excited to talk to you yes hi thank you so much for your kind hi. words first of all that was so thank sweet you, chloe. <laughs> No, no. I mean, it, it really looks good. And I know you've put in like a lot of hard work. But before we start in and like jump into the game, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got the company started? Like we want to know all the details. Absolutely. Uh, so I uh, studied video game development in university, graduated in 2019. Um, and once I was out of my bachelor's, I was kind of struggling to find my place in the industry. Um, you know, wondering, you know, if I was comfortable working on games that I wouldn't necessarily play myself for my whole career. Mm -hmm. um, and then my co-founders are so my sister, Raphael, and my cousin, Olivier. Uh, the three of us were kind of a place where we were wondering what we were going to do with our career. And we have always been working on creative projects together since we were kids. We started working on our first video game at like age 11 on RPG Maker. Oh, wow. uh, so yeah, it was really delightful that we are, were all at the same place at the same time uh you know willing to kind of tackle that whole entrepreneurial journey and we got super lucky along the way met some incredible people who really believed in our project we were able to you know raise funds and hire our first team members um so now we're a team of about 15 people uh working on this project for about four years now so it's been a long process but we're really really proud of our of our product even though you know it's it's not necessarily perfect and it's still an indie project so it's uh it's i think fair to say that although it does have a maybe like a triple a look in the sense that it's a realistic rendering style uh it's it's i think it's important to mention that it's still an indie project made with so so much love but uh it's not perfect you can feel you know the the, the love behind it um in all its facets negative and positive and i really 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 hope that people dig it and love it and um you know see all of our efforts uh it's been a real absolute pleasure pleasure to work with the team that we've assembled and it's yeah i think it shows in the product you know how much love there was behind the project Listen, I just want to say to you, like, you don't have to come on and be like, it's an indie project. There might be some bugs. Literally every AAA game that has come out has had bugs. So do not feel bad. And the fact that like you went from the beginning to the end, like there are so many people who want to be game developers. There are so many women who want to be game developers. And then they feel like overwhelmed by the community and the industry, right? Because it, it is male dominated. So for the right the fact that you like started it and you've gotten this far like kudos to you i'm so proud of you i'm so proud of everybody on your team but everyone we're gonna jump into the game so you can get a look at what's coming because i mean like it's it's incredible red's gonna take over right now let's let's see we're we're with sophie's colleagues so red let's go let's get this let's get this started chloe if there's anything that you want to tell us about the game as we're going through please jump in and let us know yeah, so first of all, this is uh, the demo. Uh, it's going to be available on Steam by the time that this comes out. So you can go ahead and play that segment of the game yourself if you're interested. Uh, just a, a quick note about, uh, you know, you mentioned the bugs and I, I, I'm so, so thankful that <laughs> you, you uh, take a, a moment to acknowledge that. Uh, it, this is actually a work in progress build, so there might still you know be a few kinks that hopefully will be uh taken care of by the time this this comes out so in the build that will be available on steam uh there should not be those bugs i hope uh but yeah just wanted to mention that really quickly but yeah so this is the demo um you play as a maid called sophie the year is 1958 and uh you're made in a hotel so yeah i i you can dive right in red if you're ready to get this started so 
My question is, what made you pick this this era, this style of game? Like, what influenced you to make it? So we were initially, uh, it's kind of funny, uh, we wanted to make a very small scope game. So we were um, trying to find a, a, you know, a time and a place where we could really limit the, you know, the levels and the characters that we had to work on. Uh, flash forward four years later, we're still working on the project and uh, the scope has like exploded. But yeah, so we, you know, we were always, you know, it, I think something really special about the 50s is um, that uh, you know, people had hidden lives and as a studio, because, you know, of our, of our personal histories as people before, you know, uh, even before we're even developers, we're a team that's primarily, uh, people in our team are mostly queer people, women, and people, you know, of, of different mar marginalized identities. So that was something that was super important to us and having a chance to tell a story, um, from you know the perspective of the 50s being ex you know able to explore the struggles that people had to live with you know to to hide their true selves in order to be accepted in, in society that kind of stuff it was really 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 rich in themes and uh we thought it was really cool and also uh we like something that's pretty and i you know the aesthetics are there for sure in the 50s uh so yeah that's the that's the little you know run of why we chose the 50s but uh, we're definitely like, we, we love a retro vibe, you know, first and foremost, I yes. think. Yes. It looks really good. Listen, I just got goosebumps I, um, when she walked into this room. Oof. Yeah, the whole noir, like I love, like during that time, a lot of noir movies were out. Um, I would watch yeah. them with my grandma. So uh, I love the aesthetic of everything. And yeah, we're in a creepy you, scene because she's like yeah. photograph. <laughs> like, <laughs> like who's watching Sophie? Like we need to figure this out. Oh my god. You goodness. are asking the right questions. Yeah, so Sophie's <laughs> being stalked by one of the clients who oh, no. decided oh, to god. set up a, a little dark room in his hotel yeah, room, like, you know, as you do. Real creative. Could you imagine like working someplace and then walking into a room and seeing a bunch of photos of yourself like I'm already like pulled into this game and it's only been like the first three minutes like I want to know who is messing with Sophie's life right now the fact that she is not as like scared as I am like kudos to her she's a brave lady because I would have been like I'm putting in my two week notice now like I'm <laughs> Yeah, so um, Sophie's definitely got a you know a, a you know a personality. She's she's really strong-willed. She's shy, but she's curious. Uh, but by the player input, you can totally influence the way that it unfolds, the way her personality develops, because obviously she's going to go through some really traumatic and intense things in um, the process of the game. Uh, so she's going to evolve as a person also. So then through the player choices and the you know the you know there's multiple ways to affect the ending of the game there's a bunch of different endings so you can really Ooh. have an impact on the way the story unfolds so yeah you I can definitely it. decide to have thank you so yeah sophie can be a lot of different ways depending on what you do uh one of the things mm -hmm. that is taken into consideration by the game is how good you are at your cleaning duties so uh, all of the cleaning tasks are completely optional but if you do not do okay. anything or you do not do them well, it can have some consequences. So that I'm just I'm just gonna oh, say man. that. <laughs> That's good to know because I wouldn't have cleaned anything. Like as soon as I found out somebody was stalking me, I'd be like, I'm not even oh, worried. Interactive <laughs> cleaning. Oh, too. oh nice. Man. Make sure you get yeah. the, the tub needs to be spotless red. Oh, spotless. What is this? I, I wanted to know what <gasps> this is. It looks blood. How bad? Like <laughs> you just cleaned up. This real quick. Listen, the cops are going to be really upset with you because you just erased <laughs> a lot of. Evidence. I think it was. I think it was. I think it was the developer. <laughs> <laughs> that is actually such a good point. I'm so glad that you noted that because that's actually one of the ways that you can solve the mystery. It's not to spoil too much, mm. but um, since you know you're a woman in the 50s, um, you're not a detective, you're not a cop, so you cannot just arrest someone. You cannot, you know, even if you think someone is, you know, the culprit of the the crime that you'll see unfold before your eyes, uh, even if you just tell the detectives. Just the fact that you're a woman in the 50s, you have a, you know, a, you're employed as a maid, but also, you know, right. on how you acted throughout the game. Um, it's possible that the police might not believe you. So cleaning is actually one of the ways that you can solve the mystery. So you can kind of decide to clean certain oh. things and some others not, and it will affect the ending. So the cleaning mechanics um, 
or actually we've noticed that in playtests and stuff, people really like cleaning. It's kind of something that we didn't think would be such an important <laughs> feature of the game. Uh, it has some like, it's really relaxing for some people, but yeah, it, it's not there just for, you know, the, the ASMR <laughs> side of things. It's also a way to solve the mystery. So. I love that. Yeah, like something. everything you do, yeah, everything you do in this game has an effect on how you're in the the multiple endings is always something I love because listen, if I go through and I get a bad ending, I'm going to have anxiety, I need to replay the game. And that's really important. A lot of people don't realize that when you make a game, like you really should think about the replayable value of that game because that just makes more people want to play it that gives you like higher reviews people are talking about this ending and that ending so that's really cool um one of the last questions i wanted to ask and then i'm going to throw it to red in case she has any questions but like did you always want to have a female protagonist for your video game like i can tell that it's very important you thought about like her being in the 50s and kind of like how she would be perceived at that time was that always something that was on the forefront of like when you created this game yeah, for this game specifically, absolutely. Um, this project we started with, you know, only the core team, the co-founders. So it has a lot of us in that uh, storytelling because we were the initial team. And once we started to build the team, it was more difficult to change certain things. Um, now that we've built an incredible, amazing team, we're really, really looking forward also to, you know, have all kinds of protagonists, not only women, you know, also people of marginalized gender, men, it doesn't matter. We're not necessarily, uh, we don't, necessarily want to only tell women's stories it's more a question of like you know putting people in the spotlight that maybe are not often seen on screen uh, in video games that. not only the fact that they're women uh, but also the fact that you know they don't necessarily have a super important role in society they're not like a knight in shining armor or like a, right. a marine or some kind of stuff you know they're just regular people going about their lives and being confronted with you know dark stuff so yeah that's one of the things <laughs> that i think as a team we we really really want to do uh for this specific story it really made sense that it was from the perspective of sophie who's a woman but then it might not be the case forever for all of our games but yeah uh definitely you know putting a spotlight on spot, a spotlight on people who um don't necessarily have that kind of attention all, all, the, all, the, all the time is definitely important for sure. I, I love that. And you know what, we're, we're closing in on the end, but before we go, Chloe, if people wanna find out more about you, find out about your team and find out about this incredible game, where can they find you? Drop your socials, we wanna know. For sure. So all of our uh, ads on every social media is Low Birth Games. Uh, you can also visit our website. You have all of our links on there. Um, my my personal uh, socials are also all under Chloe, Chloe Lucy that you see on the bottom here. We would be so, so, so happy if you wanted to join our Discord. Obviously, that's the best way to give us feedback, uh, have a conversation that's, you know, that's more two-sided. That makes us so, so, so happy when we get a chance to really exchange, you know, with you and not just, you know, um, have like tweets and stuff posted out there. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if you are interested in, in getting to know the rest of the team as well and, and chatting about the project, we would be delighted to have you in our Discord server. So the link for our Discord server is uh, on our bio in uh, our Twitter account. And I think in most of our bios on all social media, uh, it's pretty easy to find. So we would be so happy to see you there. Awesome. Well, thank you, Chloe. Thank you for coming on, taking the time to talk to us about your team, about your game. Red, you did incredible. Look, we've already started a mystery. We got to figure out what's going on. I know. I'm, I'm but... like, I'm in immersed, like, <laughs> into finding out what's going on and who's this person, like, stalking her. What? Listen, like, within the first two minutes, I was like, there's some drama going on. And Chloe's a trooper because listen, I I already told you I would have put in that two week notice. Like I would be nervous. <laughs> yeah, but dope. thanks everybody. It was it was great. Um, the show has been absolutely incredible. We've shown some games. We've shown some star players in the community telling us why they love games and why it's important to them. And um, I just want to give a shout out to every single person who's watching today because you. You matter, you matter in the gaming space. And this is kind of why we've created this. And you know what, Red? Before we like jump into like the ending ending of everything, is there anything you okay. wanna say about today's showcase? Like, you, you know, like just put, just put it out there, girl, just put it out there. 
um we did it like because it's it's always dope to put like your footprint and to have a footprint and showcasing ladies from all ages uh because a lot of times little girls i grew up i've been playing games since i was little and i know some fellow girls that stopped playing video games because they didn't really see themselves a lot or they you know things was people was telling them or factors around them was like oh that's just for boys or anything like that so to have a showcase like this and to show that you can do it too you could be a part of the gaming community you could be a part of the gaming industry and to see it actually done i just think is so pivotal right now so um it's just right here it's it's right here in the heart well said, you know? well said. So, we did it yes we did it man. <laughs> So oh, God. I'm happy and can't wait till we do it again and much grander and bigger. And we can't wait for you all to join in and know more about it. Uh, definitely hit us up to be a part of it next year. This has been like an incredible experience, I must say. Uh, thank you everyone for tuning in uh, and watching and those likes, sharing to everyone really enjoyed everyone participating and being a part of this show destiny thank you so much for having me be a part of this prolific project and dream come alive uh but let's also thank those who helped support us and make this actually come true so a uh, huge shout out to our sp uh, our sponsors freedom games thank you Yo, so freedom. much for your contributions let's go <laughs> um the mix of course being a part yes. of the mix umbrella has been so fascinating i love being a part of this team and the family speaking of family i'll keep it short and sweet and i won't throw out any more dad jokes since nobody thought my last joke was funny do you guys see what i did there family dad no all right anyways kickstarter thank you so much for your support you have been great love you guys and um, yeah, if you aren't checking out games that are on Kickstarter and aren't trying to fund games with any of that extra cash you got lying around, what are you doing? Experience Studios, who is also part of Black Voices in Gaming, and of course now with Dames for Games, so I'm so happy about that. And we also got to give a big shout out to our partners, Wings, who we've also had on this show, an amazing organization working to help developers reach their dreams. And you know, Key Game Type. Huh? <laughs> I so happen to be the founder uh, and creator of Geek Game Type, but to give y'all some blurb on that, uh, it's a really dope media outlet serving Black, Hispanic, and Native geeks from all around the world. And also Otaku Noir. Uh, they're the creators of the first Blurred Box. And if you stay tuned, we have a special announcement that we would like to share with you later on and the party chat podcast shouts out to christine over there such a dope scene over at party chat podcast if you haven't checked them out make sure y'all do and destiny uh also shed some light on some of our broadcasting partners oh yo the broadcasting partners the reason why you're seeing this showcase let's give it up for twitch gaming ign Steam and GameSpot, like so, so incredible. Thank you so much for being here. And uh, listen, if you wanna keep up with us, cause we're gonna be doing big things. This is not the last show, it's the first show, the very beginning of so many things to come. This we're not a Dames for Games. It is not a, we are not a one hit wonder. <laughs> <laughs> you can follow us at Dames for Games across many social media platforms that's our TikTok, that's our twitter that's our instagram that's our facebook make sure to check us out because we will be consistently posting and keeping you guys updated yo this has been so so dope i'm incredibly proud of everyone who came onto the show and everyone who is out there doing their thing making moves and creating the change that you want to see is so incredibly important and it takes a lot of courage to step out and say hey i want to make this happen and actually make it happen we're building a foundation for aspiring game developers content creators and other roles in the industry women want to take on i loved every minute of this from the conception to the realization that it was going to happen. 
So again, I want to say thank you to the Dames for Games team. You guys, you've just been so incredible in helping me put this together. It has been an undertaking. Like, I didn't know what it was like to produce and be a creative director of a show until I went through this. And listen, I take my hats off to you who do it every day. I'm about to join the ranks. I'm going to uh, bring Red <laughs> with me. We're we going to do this together. Also, another thanks Let's to Freedom it. Games. Um, without you, like funding the very beginning of this venture, we wouldn't have been able to get as far as we have. So Freedom Games, guys, go check out Freedom Games. They have some incredible stuff on their developer page. Like go to Steam and go check out their games. Please, please. They have over, over there, like, for sure. yeah, they have over like 60 games. Go check it out. Uh, the mixed team, you guys are beautiful. You're always there for me and you really believed in me and that I could do this. And here I am doing this with Red and all you kind folks. And uh, yeah, you continue to drive the passion and, and you continue to inspire me. But guys, that's, that. The, I, I was gonna end it. I was gonna end it, but like really quick, really quick before I end it. <clears throat> Go check out the Steam page. Go type in Guerrilla Collective 2023 to see all the games that we showcased, all the games that Black Voices in Gaming is going to showcase, and all the games that Guerrilla Collective is going to showcase. Go wishlist some games. Go purchase some games. It's the summertime. Like, there's nothing else to do, really. I mean, I'm sure there's other things to do, but, like, I'm giving you the perfect excuse not to do anything. And, uh... Yeah, no, they, they, that's a wrap. We we did it. We di we did it, Red. We did it. I know I keep making that joke, but like, guys, I I could no, like, like it, it's so it, it takes a lot. It takes a lot, but it, I just love how everyone was excited and involved. For many of those who are, are watching, it was like, yo, I would love to be a part of it. Please, please, stay in tune with us, even though we're saying. You know, follow us, engage with us, let us know what you're doing too in the community and also in the gaming industry. Anything that's involved that you're doing, any type of communities that you're a part of, we want to hear from you. Uh, a lot of people, like I said, the industry or the community or other people of the world just really think we don't exist and we're not out here doing anything on something that we love, which is video games that bring us all together, period. So please reach out to us let us know everything that you're a part of what you're doing at us access questions and so forth and yes destiny we did it <laughs> we did we it. did it. we did it hooray we did it. <laughs> okay but before we go red where can the people find you we, you drop those socials one more time where can we find you oh sure it is red infamy across the board that's on twitter instagram YouTube, you name it, Red Infamy, even if you want to play some games. Also check out Geek Game Tight, that's T-Y-T-E dot com to see what's in store as far as black gamers, Hispanic gamers, and native indigenous gamers from all around the world. Definitely check us all out and see what we're up to. So we love movements like this because it gives people who does not have a voice or seem like they don't have a voice a light. So yes, that's where you can check me at. Sweet. As you guys know, my name is Destiny, and you can catch me all over the place at DMBC32. I just hit me up, especially if you're trying to be a part of something bigger and better that's going to make the gaming community as a whole really strive and, and become a place where we all feel safe and we can all really just enjoy playing games. I'm really, really happy. Yeah, I'm really happy. I can't stop smiling. Um, I guess we'll catch you guys in the next showcase. I hope you're ready because it's going to be bigger, bigger and, and better and, and, and just so much more, so much more.